and Nidori knows it is King Nido here and today we are coming to you from San Loon City where the bug type swarm are hosting the Jubilife Venom and the poison types are trying to get back into the Masters 8 as they start out with Nido King and Crobat it will be Pinsa and Sizzle starting out for the bug types as Crobat with that huge 130 base speed starts out with the bite there onto Pinsa and Nido King is going to follow it up with the Volt Switch there onto Sizzle so Nido King will go back to the bench already at the start of this match and out comes Toxicroak in its place. Pinsa though going for the payback there onto Crobat capitalizing on the fact that it already took damage from it. And Sizzle follows it up with the X Sizzle. Now the poison types do resist bug type moves as Crobat is setting up for the fly. It goes up into the sky. We'll see that connect on the next time. But the mud shot is avoided by Crobat from Pinsa. Allowing Toxicroak to go for the stomp there onto Sizzle. Not very effective, but it is actually a critical hit. And Sizzle has flinched as well, allowing Crobat to come down from the sky with that fly. And Sizzle holds on, but only barely as Pinsa with the Drain Punch now on Toxicroak is going to be able to restore a little bit of health after that not very effective move. But any bit of health that these Pokemon can get back is very crucial as Toxicroak is going to bury its way under the ground, setting up for the dig. And now Sizzle with the Vice Grip going for Crobat there. And that is a great hit. Gets the critical hit, but Crobat is able to hold on barely. And Crobat responds with the Floral Healing. Is going to actually restore the health here of Sizzle. That is terrible for the Jubilee Venom. But it is what the Santa Loon Swarm need. As Toxicroak is going to complete the dig onto Sizzle. And because of the Floral Healing, Sizzle is able to stay in the match as the Spit Up fails. And Sizzle with the Laser Focus that Spit Up from Pinsa. But yes, that's Sizzle now concentrating intensely as the Soothing Aroma goes through the air, but it fails from Crobat. And Pinsa with the Trick Room is going to reverse the speed order, making Sizzle now the quickest Pokemon on the field, allowing it to go for the Strength now onto Toxicroak. And what a critical hit. Fantastic there by Sizzle. Now Toxicroak flies up into the sky itself. So we'll see it fly yet again, but that Flamethrower is avoided by Toxicroak from Sizzle. Pinsa with the rain dance, that rain will start to fall over the field. Now the Sandalone Swarm definitely need a victory here today. They are sitting in last place in the standings as Toxicroak comes down with the fly onto Sizzle and Sizzle has been eliminated. That is not what the Swarm need. They have lost six games in a row. They do not want that seventh one as Toxicroak with that dry skin ability is going to restore a little bit of health and we have Heracross now. Coming out onto the field and Pinsa with the present is going to take damage, uh, is going to give damage, sorry, to Toxicroak and Heracross follows it up with the Defog. This is going to lower Toxicroak, Toxicroak's evasiveness. So, so much happening on in this matchup as a Glaciate from Toxicroak hits both bug type Pokemon and it is going to lower both of their speed. Now, they still will move quicker because that Trick Room is still in effect as Crobat with the Cross Chop going for Pinsa here. Not very effective, unfortunately, and there's that. Dry skin ability yet again being activated. Toxicroak restoring a little bit more health. As now Heracross with the Dragon Tail onto Crobat. Crobat is eliminated and Heracross being on the home side has its hidden ability Moxie. It's going to get an attack boost here. Actually speaking of Moxie, Pinsa has that as well as it goes for the Dragon Pulse onto Toxicroak and gets the elimination. So both Heracross and Pinsa completing the huge play in this turn. They also both get an attack boost due to their... Hidden ability Moxie. Now we have Nado King coming back out onto the field for the Jubilee Phantom and being joined by Venusaur as the Swarm are currently in front. Pinsa going with the play nice onto Nado King. This is going to lower that attack stat of the Poison Ground type. And Heracross follows it up with a super effective water gun there onto Nado King as a soft boil will fail from Venusaur, who is at full strength. But Nado King with the lovely kiss onto Pinsa. Looking to put the Pokemon to his sleep, and it is successful with that move, so Pinsa won't be able to go for anything. But the Twisted Dimensions have returned to normal, so now Nido King is the quickest on the field, and with that Pain Split, will share its pain with Heracross, and Venusaur follows it up with the Aqua Jet on to Pinsa. A good hit there, as that Spit Up fails from Heracross, and Pinsa is still asleep on the field. This is still anybody's matchup. As that rain does stop over the field, and Nido King now going for the Mac Punch onto Pinsa, doing very little damage there as it is resisted. But Venusaur with that takedown could finish Pinsa off, and it does. This is going to level the playing field. Venusaur will get some recoil damage, but there are now four Pokemon remaining for both sides as Heracross with the Poison Sting onto Venusaur. It 
isn't resisted due to that grass type. It's like Cell Gore now comes out, goes for the Iron Tail, but Venusaur avoids that, allowing Nato King to go for the Bullet Punch here onto Heracross. Doesn't do much damage, and Venusaur follows it up with a Stun Sport. This is going to leave Excel Gore paralyzed. It could make it slower than both Poison type Pokemon. This Heracross is going to hide underwater, going for the dive. If it goes for Nido King, this will be super effective. It could actually finish it off. Nido King, though, is preparing for that, so goes for the defense kill. Is going to get a defense boost here. And now Venusaur with the haze, so it will be quicker than Excel Gore on the field. Excel Gore has been slowed down drastically. Heracross so will complete the dive onto Nido King, and Nido King is eliminated with that super effective move. But its poison point ability has been activated. Heracross is now poison. That's two more Pokemon now on the side of the Sandalin Swarm who have got status conditions as Pinsir did earlier being put to sleep. But that Moxie ability is activated again for Heracross as the echoed voice from Excelgor will connect with Venus. So it doesn't do a great deal of damage though. It's Heracross there feeling the effects of that poisoning. And now Tentacruel comes out for the Jubilee Venom and immediately starts to cause an uproar. It is going to connect with Excelgor there. A good hit with that uproar. Heracross though responding for its side with the Shadow Clock. It's a great hit on the Venusaur. Venusaur though responds with the Hydro Pump. It's a signature move of one of its fellow Cantonian starters. Almost gets the elimination, but Excel now with the Grassy Glide on the Tentacruel gets a good hit there. And there's that poisoning that Heracross has, and it will finish it off. So Heracross is taken out of this matchup. Now we're now three on three in this matchup. Tentacruel still making that up rock. And out comes Center Scorch for the Santorin Swarm. Tentacruel continuing to cause that uproar, going for Center Scorch this time. Venusaur following it up with the Tri Attack onto the Fire Bug type here. That's a really good hit with that move too, as Center Scorch going for the Simple Beam, not capitalizing on its Fire type advantage over Venusaur. Venusaur's Overgrow ability has become simple. And Excel Gore going for a Thunder Wave onto Tentacruel. So Tentacruel now will also be paralyzed, just like Excel Gore. So Excel Gore should at least be faster than Tentacruel who does continue to cause that uproar. And there's the flail from Venusaur, almost eliminates Excel Gore as Center Scorch sets up the tail when Excel Gore was able to hold on and goes for the stomp here onto Tentacruel, gets a good hit as Tentacruel gets that uproar yet again, this time going for Center Scorch as Tentacruel finally calms down. Center Scorch going for the double kick onto Tentacruel, will connect both times, but it is not very effective with that move, and Excel Gore is unable to move due to its paralysis, allowing Venusaur to go for the Inferno, but Excel Gore avoids it, and Tentacruel also can't move because of its paralysis. Center Scorch going for the mud shot onto Venusaur. Venusaur holds on. Its speed will be lowered as Excel Gore with the acrobatics is going to finish the grass poison type of Venusaur. is taken out of this matchup. This has been back and forth greatly as Tentacruel going for the Aqua Ring. It is going to try and restore health in between turns. This could be a very good play here. This Tentacruel does get a little bit of health back. And out comes Nato Queen as the last Pokemon for the Jubilee Phantom. Center Scorch with the Drain Punch here onto Tentacruel. It's going to activate, though, that Liquid Ooze ability that Tentacruel has. So Center Scorch will actually have damage done to itself with that move. Excel Gore again unable to move due to its paralysis, allowing Nato Queen to set up the Leech Seed onto Excel Gore. Surely this will finish it off at the end of this turn, but first Tentacruel going for the Metal Claw. Santa Scorch holds on after that not very effective move, and there is that Aquaring being activated for Tentacruel. And the Leech Seed on Excel Gore does finish it off, which means that there are only two Pokemon now remaining for both sides, and that Tailwind does peter out for the Sandalone Swarm. It will be Orbeetle though, the last Pokemon for the Sentinel Swarm, immediately going for the Burning Jealousy. It does have that Psychic typing that it should try to capitalize on over these Poison types as the Dual Chop only needs one to finish Center Scorch off Nido Queen with that elimination. Putting the Venom in front and Tentacruel with the Aura Sphere is going to be heavily resisted by the Psychic Bug type as we get our first time warning for the matchup if we do go into overtime. It will become a singles battle with any remaining Pokemon that haven't been eliminated from this matchup being restored back to full health as Nidoqueen now with the Searing Shot. This will hit everybody on the field. It is super effective on Orbital. Tentacruel is able to heavily tank that move. But Tentacruel, unfortunately, is unable to move due to that paralysis. It is still restoring health from that Veil or whatever that's surrounded in. As Orbital now with the Dragon Claw, and we get another time warning. Goes for Nidoqueen. Nidoqueen though responding with the Strength Sack. 
Sap. It is going to lower the attack stat of Orbital, and this should restore Nido Queen back to full strength, and that it surely will, as it does. Tentacruel now going for the Floral Healing. This is not what it needs to do. We've already had two time warnings, and it's restoring the health of Orbital. They want to get the elimination. The Jubilee Venom want to get back into the Masters 8. What is Tentacruel thinking? That is insane for it to make that move. As now Orbital with the Milk Drink, but it's at full strength thanks to Tentacruel. Nidoqueen with the Swift as we are in the countdown. And Tentacruel is going to disappear from the field, setting up for the Shadow Force. Trying to go for that super effective move. It continues to restore its health. And Orbital with the Autotomize is going to greatly boost its speed here. It is going to become nimble. It already is the quickest Pokemon on the field though. Nato Queen with the Harden. It is going to give itself a massive defense boost here. We are taking into the final seconds, and Tentacruel is unable to move because of the paralysis. We are more than likely going into overtime. This will be the last moves if they can get the elimination of Orbital. Nato Queen with the Screech. It is going to lower that defense of Orbital greatly here. Tentacruel needs to capitalize on it. It goes for the Inferno. This will be super effective. It doesn't get the job done. Orbital holds on, but it is left with the burn. That burn will do a little bit of chip damage, but it does not look like it will be enough to eliminate Orbital, which means we are going into overtime. Orbital will be restored back to full strength, as will Tentacruel and Nido Queen. It is Tentacruel coming out for the Jubilee Venom. It is a singles battle now. Orbital coming out all by itself. It has no backup. Tentacruel immediately starting on the offensive, going for the spark onto Orbital. Able to avoid the paralysis, but Orbital responding with the takedown. It will get a little bit of recoil damage. Both of them are swinging for the fence here. Tentacruel with the Moon Blast onto Orbital. Gets a good hit there. It's also going to lower Orbital's special attack here. And Orbital does have that 80 base special attack. It is more of a defensive Pokemon as it does levitate with the Electromagnetism now. Tentacruel with the Acid, it does get that same type attack bonus, gets a good hit on Orbital with that, and Orbital responds with the Razor Shell, might try to lower the defense of Tentacruel there, but it is unsuccessful, Tentacruel going for the Glaciate onto Orbital, it is in elimination range, but it holds on, it does have its speed lowered, however, Orbital going for the Poison Sting, this will be resisted by Tentacruel here, and now Tentacruel with the wood hammer should finish it off and it does orbital is eliminated with that not very effective move nato queen was able to stay on the bench in overtime tentacruel gets a little bit of recoil damage but it does not care it has gotten the victory for its side the jubilee venom get the much needed win and they do move up into eighth place they are now in the masters eight whereas the sandalin swarm stay on the bottom of the ladder and their next matchup will be against the feral mines hopefully they can fare better than Whereas the Jubilee Venom next round will be facing the Humalau Cascade, who in our very next matchup will be taking on the Golden Rod Balance. Both these sides still trying to fight their way into the Masters 8. It will be 11th versus 12th. I cannot wait for that matchup. Nidorinos and Nidorinos, thank you so much for watching. Let us know in the comments below who you thought was the best on field. And if you enjoyed what you saw here today, please leave a like, share, subscribe. But more importantly, always remember, you are awesome, and I'll see you when you see me.